Hey everyone, uh, today I'm excited to do a walkthrough of these brand new foldable solar panels that I just got from Amazon. And uh, I want to do this because these are a different flavor of solar panels, something that I haven't seen before. Uh, they're sort of an interesting hybrid between a foldable solar panel and a flexible solar panel. And uh, as you can see, they fold up. Uh, I got two different flavors here. Uh, I have a 120 watt version and a 60 watt version. And uh, so I want to walk through those today. And if you're familiar with some of my older videos, you probably saw that I own a pair of Goal Zero Boulder 100 foldable briefcase panels. And these are great. They're glass and aluminum and they work really well. I figure they're pretty uh, standard as far as output, but boy, are they heavy. And there's some interesting alternative products on the market right now. There are these foldable solar panels. So these have a cloth exterior and over the last couple of years, they've gotten bigger and bigger. And now you can get 100 or two or even 300 watt foldable panels. The issue I see with these is there's been a lot of issues with delamination on the panels um, and they just feel kind of generally floppy. And I don't really like the fact that the fabric on the outside is just going to wear out. It doesn't feel very weatherproof and uh, they just kind of feel like a toy. So I'm not crazy about this approach. And another popular product in the last couple of years are these large flexible solar panels. Uh, these are really cool because they're lightweight and they're easy to move around, but they also have a downside. Uh, they're so large, a lot of these are two and three feet long, um, that their flexibility can actually cause damage to the panels if you're moving them around quite a bit. So I've always been pretty leery of these. And in recent years, uh, we have some better alternatives. So this Jackery is a 100 watt panel that's very lightweight, like a flexible panel, but it's a bit more rigid and it's foldable. So it's not quite as big and a little easier to move around. And that brings us to the TP solar panels that we're going to be covering today. So I found these on Amazon. Uh, I picked up the 120 watt version, which is currently not sold. It's out of stock, but I paid 225 for that. And you can see the 60 watt version, which it basically just has half as many panels. Uh, that goes for 137 right now. So uh, a really good value. And when they finally arrived and I put them next to my Boulder 100s, I was kind of blown away by the size difference. So you can see this is the 120 watt panel in its carrying case and compared to the boulders, it is absolutely tiny. Uh, taking them out of the cases, you see the 120 watt panel on the left and the 60 watt panel on the right. If you put them together, I mean, they're still thinner than half of one side of the boulder 100 watt panel. And right here I'm holding uh, 180 watts of solar panels in my hand. It's amazing how light these are. And uh, so it's really impressive design. And as far as construction goes, you can see both sizes of panels are physically identical when they're folded. Uh, obviously the 120 watt panel is a little bit thicker. It's twice as thick. Um, and the handle is just cut out of the backing material. And then you can see the junction boxes on the outside. And um, yeah, overall really solidly built. And if we take a look at the 60 watt panel and open it up, you can see it's just two sections here. And if we open up the 120 watt panel, you'll see obviously it's four sections, uh, but otherwise they're pretty much the same. Uh, when they're folded, they're 14 by 21 inches for the main panel and then another couple inches for the handle itself. And once the 120 watt panel is completely unfolded, you can see it's, it's pretty long. And to be exact, it's 57.4 inches long for the 120 watt panel and 28.7 inches for the 60 watt. And this has nice integrated grommets. And if you take a look at the surface of the panel, that's the part that really attracted me to this. This uses ETFE for the surface, which is really the most rugged kind of panel that you can have. I don't think I'm going to have as many problems with delamination with this style of panel and um, you can see it has a nice textured surface and the panels themselves are incredibly thin they're according to the specs only four millimeters thick which is 0.16 inches um, and if you compare the 120 watt to the 60 watt panel you see the only difference is that little nub in there and what that actually is is a magnetic closure so this is at the bottom of the panel and so that allows the panel to stay together when you're holding it by the handle. If you didn't, the bottom would kind of splay out. 
Now looking at the outside surface of this, um, you can see it has a very lightly textured fabric surface. It's um, really quite smooth. Um, I do wish that the outside was a little more rugged feeling, uh, something a little bit more water resistant. And it's not so much that there's actual fabric here that will get wet like with the old uh, foldable solar panel style, uh, but it just doesn't exactly have that hard shiny finish that I think would be nice on the outside of a panel like this, just make it a little bit easier to wipe down. Uh, speaking of wiping down, you can see it's pretty easy to get a little bit of surface dirt on here, but you know, a quick wipe with a cloth will definitely take care of that. And you know, overall construction is really good and this thing is backed by a 15 year warranty. So I feel pretty good about it. Uh, so let's take a look at the junction box. So the junction box has two USB-A ports that are capable of quick charge two and three and can put out two amps a piece. And next to it is a round 19 volt port. And that's where you're gonna use it to plug into say a solar generator like my Goal Zero Yeti 1000. One minor nitpick is because the junction box is on the back of the panel, it, you can see it prevents it from sitting totally flat on a surface. So if you're planning on laying this out like a solar blanket, uh, you gotta be aware of that. And you really don't wanna step on that part of the panel. Um, one thing that you can do if you're using this on a table is just slide it forward a little bit and that should take care of the problem. All right, so let's take a look at all the accessories you get. So first of all, you get this cable, which is the primary power cable. It's probably about three or four feet long. And this plugs into the 19 volt port on the solar panel. Uh, because I'm using a Goal Zero Yeti, it comes with this yellow tip adapter. So that plugs right in like that. And then that can plug right into the Yeti. Um, it's a pretty good fit. I actually ended up putting gaffer's tape on mine to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And you can see it comes with all of these other tips. So this should be compatible with pretty much any sort of solar generator out on the market. And it also will be compatible with a wide range of laptops. So also included in the package is this uh, cigarette lighter adapter. So pretty straightforward piece of equipment here. Um, you also get a adapter for MC4, which is really nice. So if you have a MC4 set up already, you can just hook these in um, and join it up with the rest of your system. The one thing I did think is kind of strange, and I mentioned this to the company, is the wires here are super, super thin. Uh, they almost look like 18 gauge or so, or maybe even less. So uh, the wiring seems really thin for something that's going to be carrying over 100 watts of power. Um, you also get a set of alligator clips and, you know, they're decent quality. They're nothing special, but they do seem like they have a decent grip on them. Um, so, you know, if you need them, they're okay. Um, they also have the same problem with the wiring, though. You can see the wiring is super, super thin on these as well. So... Uh, both the MC4 and the alligator clips, I really wish they had gone with a beefier cable there. Um, you also get this interesting cable. So this goes from the barrel connector to a USB, and it's got this little box, and uh, that supposedly converts the voltage. So I'm not really sure what this is used for. Maybe you can let me know in the comments, but um, anyway, it comes with that other adapter for you. All right, so it's pretty cloudy day. You can see there's just pockets of sun, uh, mostly cloudy though. Um, but I really couldn't wait to fire this up. So I grabbed the cable. I grabbed this eight millimeter adapter, which will let me plug it into my Yeti. Uh, the other end of this just goes into the junction box. And we're gonna fire this up and see what happens when these are lying flat. Uh, so that's obviously less than optimal. You want them to be angled, but we're gonna just lay the 120 and the 60 watt panels flat on this table plug them both into the mppt inputs and you can see we're getting some really good output here we're getting you know 146 to 148 watts when the sun is as clear as possible so that's surprisingly good for two panels that are together rated at 180 watts so that's pretty good that's uh 81 percent of the rated capacity which is impressive so what I wanted to do is be a little more scientific uh, and really compare these against the Boulder 100. So uh, the Boulder 100s are a folding 100 watt monocrystalline panel. 
and uh, you know they're made of glass and aluminum so these are sort of a good reference and so my question really is do these folding panels give up something in terms of efficiency because uh, they're significantly smaller and lighter but does that translate into less power so I did a test where it's pretty much a clear day and I waited until a little afternoon and I wanted to go ahead and test these against each other because that's really the only fair way to test it so uh, this is the Boulder 100 and we're going to go ahead and plug this into the built-in PWM port on the 81000 and we'll let it stabilize and you can see we're getting about 65 watts out of that which is obviously 65% of its rated capacity and we'll go ahead and plug this into the MPPT module which should give us a little bit of a boost and you can see that's putting out say 77 watts which is 77% of its rated output which is pretty solid and this is realistic for what you can really expect with a solar panel you never get anywhere near the rated capacity so let's go ahead and test the 120 watt TP solar folding panel and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start by plugging that again into the PWM input on the Yeti. And once we plug it in, we'll give it a minute to stabilize and see what happens. So it looks like it's right around 77 watts. And if you do the math, uh, that turns out to 64% of the rated capacity. And if we compare that to the Boulder, the Boulder had 65% of capacity, so it's pretty much a wash. Uh, plugging it into the MPPT, we're getting about 86 watts. Uh, which translates to 72% of their rated capacity. Uh, the Boulder was 77, so that's a 5% difference, which seems significant. I don't know if it was just a small passing cloud, though, that made that difference. Uh, but we'll go ahead now and switch gears and test the 60-watt folding TP solar panel. And we're going to, again, start by plugging this into the PWM port. And we're going to be expecting a little bit of a lower number here. Uh, so that is... 36 watts, say 37 watts. Uh, 37 watts, that's 62% of its rated capacity. So pretty good within just a percentage or two of its larger sibling. And if we plug that into the MPPT, uh, that is getting us about, say, 45 watts, which works out to 75% of its rated capacity, which is uh, only 2% less than the Boulder 100. So uh, I would expect that there's a couple percentage points of variance between um, the just the conditions as I plug and unplug things. So I would say overall these measure pretty much the same. Um, if anything, maybe the boulder is a percentage or two more efficient, but it's pretty much a wash and these are significantly lighter. So I think it's a good trade-off. So while I had all these panels set up, I thought I'd do something kind of fun. Um, I grabbed my other Boulder 100 panel. So now I've got two 100 watt panels as well as the 180 watts in flexible panels. And I thought I'd just wire them all together with this eight millimeter to Anderson cable. So this allows me to plug or sum four panels together and just see what kind of output I got. And to maximize it, I plugged it into the MPPT input on this. And you can see I'm getting, say, 276, 277 watts out of this. Uh, so that's really good. So, you know, this would be able to refill my Yeti 1000 um, in if it was at zero in, like, say, four hours or so. So that's really, really good. If I plug it into the PWM port, you can see that drops down to about 235 watts or so. But still a lot of power going in there. Um, and, you know, I think there's a lot of questions I've gotten from people about, you know, whether or not you can plug all this in. And, you know, the answer is yes. So you can plug uh, 320 watts into the MPPT and another 320 watts into the PWM input. So, um, you know, you can get up to 720 watts in there at once if you want. Uh, but obviously heat is going to be a concern and you're going to have your fans kicking on pretty hard at that point. It also might stress out the batteries. You probably notice that these don't have a built-in kickstand. So if you lay them flat, you know, this 60 watt panel is going to give you much lower output. It'll give you around 35 watts. As you start tilting it up, you can see you're getting more and more power until you reach the apex. So when you get about 45 to 48 degrees, um, that's just about right. And when you get to that point, 
uh, you're going to be getting much more output. And so what we want to do is we want to think about ways that we can prop these up uh, because it does not have a built-in kickstand. So you can see we're already up to 44 watts if you get it dialed in or even 45 watts. Um, so most of the time I can probably just lean it against a piece of furniture or a log or something, but if you don't have that, you can use something like this easel. So I found a pair of these easels on Amazon. They're about 12 bucks each. Uh, they're made out of aluminum, they're really light. Um, and I thought these might be a really nice way to prop these up if you were, say, in an open field and you wanted to get that little extra boost of energy by angling them correctly. So these set up really simply. Um, and I bought these particular ones because they are fairly big. So they'll give the solar panel uh, quite a bit of good support here. So once we get this set up, all we need to do is drop the solar panel onto it and get it at the right angle. And one little thing, you can see this little wiggly in here in the tray, it's too wide. I just took a little piece of foam that I had left over and wedged it in there. Uh, once I did that, it was really, really tight. Like I could move the base around, uh, I could move the solar panel. Uh, things didn't move at all. So that's definitely the way to solve that problem. Uh, so yeah, once it's all in there, you know, it's very, very solid. And uh, so this is probably a decent solution. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate that you have to pay an extra, say, 12 bucks or 24 bucks if you have a big one, but I think it's a pretty nice little setup for any scenario where you have a folding panel that doesn't have a proper kickstand. Uh, you can also do it for the 120 watt version, so this is using two tripods, um, and I think it looks pretty good. The one thing I did notice, though, is that the angle on these is a little extreme, so I might go ahead and take the back leg off and shorten it just a little bit so we get just the right angle. All right, so the last thing is the carrying case. Uh, it comes in this zippered bag. It's super, super thin. It's just, you know, an unlined piece of uh, fabric. Um, it's got a pretty a single zipper at the top. It does have this nice little pouch in the front and that allows you to hold all of your accessories. So I threw them in a Ziploc bag. Um, so, you know, the case is nothing special. It is kind of a tight fit for the 120 watt panel. Um, it's just a little bit thicker and this case is pretty thin, but you know, everything works. It works fine. Um, I would say that you don't really even need to use the case because unlike the boulders, uh, the solar panels fold inward, so they're protected. Uh, so, you know, overall it's a nice little setup. So in conclusion, you know, I would say these things cost less money than the Boulder 100s. Um, they're significantly lighter and they're significantly smaller. And so if you have a portable setup where you're bringing the Yeti and you're charging it on the go, if you're camping, things like that, um, I don't really see a reason why you should opt for the larger Boulder panels. Um, yes, you might get longer life out of them. Uh, because they're glass, you might get, say, 25 or 30 years out of them. These, you'd be lucky to get, say, 10 years or 15 years. But I just think for a portable rig, these are really like the perfect solution. So uh, I'm very happy with the purchase. And uh, so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing. And I'll be doing a whole bunch of other videos on solar soon. So thanks for watching. Bye.